for the kind introduction. Uh, I'd like to thank Bardo, all my eminent professor, Professor Samir, Dr. Alie, Dr. Manel, for the kind invitation. And uh, for today, we are going to discuss the association between two common endocrine problems, uh, hypothyroidism well polycystic ovary syndrome. Uh, let's uh, so it, first of all, hypothyroidism is a known common clinical condition of thyroid hormone deficiency, where we diagnose el, uh, overt hypothyroidism by the presence of elevated TSH with suppressed free T4 levels. Regarding the regulation of thyroid hormone function, it uh, it is regulated by a very sensitive. A feedback loop, including a hypothalamic pituitary and thyroid axis, where the peripheral thyroid hormones act on the thyroid receptor type beta uh, that are expressed in the hypothalamic neurons, which mediates regulation and release of the TRH with TSH and the thyroid hormones. The common symptoms or signs attributed to hypothyroidism are common in general population, but they are not specific. And based on the interaction between the thyroid hormone and its receptors presented for reproductive organs, so thyroid dysfunction, so hyper or hypothyroidism, uh, usually associated with menstrual irregularities up to the development of subfertility. And it was found that the frequency of menstrual disturbance for hypothyroid patient is more common up to three times than in normal population, which includes changes for cycle length or amount of bleeding. The most common menstrual irregularities with hypothyroidism is oligomenorrhea. Others include amenorrhea, polymenorrhea, or menorrhagia, that is a good defect fake coagulation factors. So in hypothyroidism, there is diminished liver or lower levels of sex hormone binding globulin. So the total estrogen and testosterone level are decreased. And also there is reduction of the metabolic clearance of androstenedione. On the other hand, there is really increase a level of prolactin, where increase a level of free testosterone and estrogen levels. And also there is ovarian hypersensitivity to the effect of gonadotrophins, which leads to increased ovarian size and development of ovarian cysts in hypothyroid patients. On the other hand, polycystic ovary syndrome is another common endocrine problem affecting a female for reproductive age, where prevalence may reach 12 up to 18% of the population. Wahawa is considered the most frequent cause of anovulatory infertility associated with menstrual irregularities. El polycystic ovary syndrome is characterized mainly by the presence of chronic anovulation together with evidence of hyperandrogenism and polycystic ovary detected on ultrasound. So there are three main phenotypes of BCOS. The classic type is characterized by hyperandrogenism and anovulation. The second type is hyperandrogenism and polycystic ovaries. And finally, anovulatory BCOS with polycystic ovaries. So, uh, we diagnose the polycystic ovary based on a revised Rotterdam criteria, where the diagnosis is made if two out of three is present. The oligo or the anovulation, the clinical or biochemical evidence of androgen excess, yani good hirsutism or acne or androgenic alopecia, with good elevated free testosterone levels, where plus the polycystic ovaries detected by the ultrasound. معناها إيه إن يكون في at least one ovary involving 12 follicles size بتاعهم من 2 ل 9 millimeter يعني without dominant follicle أو يكون increase volume of the ovary more than 10 millimeter. But remember, other disorders that mimic clinical features of PCOS must be excluded. أهمها thyroid disease, hyperprolactinemia, and non-classic congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So these patients must be screened by doing a TSH with prolactin with 17 hydroxyprogesterone to exclude these disorders before the diagnosis of PCOS. 
So what is the link between thyroid, mainly in hypothyroidism, whale polycystic ovary syndrome? Uh, 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 a meta-analysis, our systemic review here, show within, within these studies, around six studies, they show a significant higher TSH level in patients with BCOS in, com in comparing to the control group. And moreover, uh, el, uh, there was increased prevalence of autoimmune thyroid disease detected in BCOS patients can significantly bardo actor manual control group. And not only el, uh, over hypothyroidism, moreover, bardo subclinical hypothyroidism was detected in up to 25% of patients with polycystic ovary syndrome. So uh, both disorders are uh, uh, frequently occur together, but the actual pathophysiology is not well established. Regarding the hypothyroidism mechanism is يعني, usually due to genetic or environmental factors, while the etiology of polycystic ovary includes genetic, hormonal, and metabolic factors. But the most common connection between both how can increase the body mass index who go the insulin resistance which are commonly encountered the hypothyroid patient who bardo most of the polycystic ovarian patients up to 70 percent of the cases are insulin resistant and they have increased body mass index so my first question what happens to ovaries in thyroid disorders who mainly in hypothyroidism patients with primary hypothyroidism uh, was reported to have increased in ovarian volume and cystic changes in the follicles. This was believed to be due to the increased level of prolactin with TSH in hypothyroid patient, both stimulate LFSH and leading to follicular stimulation of ovarian cyst. Moreover, a more severe hypothyroidism was associated with very large ovaries that may be mistaken for malignancy. As this uh, very old case report can published 1960, uh, about 80 year old uh, girl can present a baby cautious menstruation way menorrhagia. Well, patient come in can my uh, neglected or uncontrolled juvenile hypothyroidism. Uh, by doing rectal examination, they found an nexal mass about six centimeters. So uh, abdominal laparotomy was done where uh, they found the ovaries having multiple cysts which were uh, resected. Again, regarding the effect of treatment, a study included 26 females with primary hypothyroidism. They perform ultrasound ovarian uh, evaluation of the ovarian volume before at baseline and three months after achieving eothyroidism by replacement therapy. And the results were as follows, that a baseline ovarian size in patients with hypothyroidism can significantly larger than the control. Some of the hypothyroid patients had polycystic ovaries. Moreover, there was normalization of the ovarian volume in all patients so I can undo PCO or without PCO after replacement with thyroxine therapy. So we can conclude that hypothyroidism is characterized by increased ovarian volume and cystic changes of the ovary, and it's believed to be due to deposition of mucopolysaccharides, failed ovarian stroma, alteration of the ovarian stroma, and uh, which will affect the steroidogenesis and the follicular development. Elevated TSH have a stimulatory effect on FSH receptor, which is stimulated the ovarian follicle. And finally, the presence of low sex hormone binding globulin with a higher free testosterone level will trigger ovarian enlargement and cyst formation. The other question is, what happens to thyroid in polycystic ovary syndrome? As we mentioned before that a PCOS patient had high prevalence of autothyroid immune thyroid disease comparing to control group that proved by a TBO antibodies where a hypoechoic thyroid on ultrasound. Moreover, in this group of patients, they found that they had higher thyroid antibody levels, 
besides larger thyroid volumes, and finally, hypoechoic thyroidal ultrasound compatible with thyroidites. Another case control study were also included uh, 80 PCOS patients versus 80 control patients, and they found the same results as higher prevalence of autoimmune thyroiditis, where a higher prevalence of goiter fail patient in polycystic ovarian patients. Another finding, they found that this patient had higher mean TSH level, higher level of anti-TPO antibodies, and finally, more hypoechoic thyroid on ultrasound. Regarding the effect of treatment of PCOS with metformin, they found that the metformin treatment of hypothyroid polycystic ovarian patients resulted in significant reduction in serum TSH levels, and it was independently from thyroxine treatment. They explain this uh, effect as that metformin affected a change, uh, leading to change in the affinity and number of TSH receptor, increase in dopamine a tone, central dopaminergic tone, which suppress the TSH, and finally, they may have a direct effect on TSH regulation, leading to suppression of TSH levels. So we can conclude that the polycystic ovary syndrome is characterized by high prevalence of autoimmune thyroid disease, and this is believed to be due to insufficient levels of androgen to prevent autoimmunity in BCOS, as androgen was, uh, and it could provide protection against autoimmune disease, but it's insufficient in PCOS patients. The second explanation is that PCOS patients has an ovulatory cycle with low phase luteal progesterone, or progesterone uh, relatively higher estrogen. So there is higher estrogen to progesterone ratio, with that is a reason for increase in autoimmune disease. The progesterone lead protective rule for the immune system against the development of autoimmune disease. The progesterone by itself inhibits the macrophage proliferation, interleukin-6 synthesis, antibody production, CD4 cell proliferation with T helper cell response. So low progesterone may be responsible for increased autoimmune disease for the BCOS. So finally, the high estrogen lacks the stimulatory effect on the immune system and may lead to the development of autoimmune disease, women do not autoimmune thyroid disease. So we can conclude from the previous studies that both disorders are closely associated. And here, some of the possible causes or mechanism behind this phenomenon, which includes mainly genetic polymorphism, the role of sex, steroids, and finally, L metabolic risk. So both hypothyroidism and BCOS, the home genetic background, where they usually cluster in families. Many top and variants were, was associated by hypothyroidism, as HLEDR, CTLE4, CD20, and many other genes. On the other hand, BCOS was uh, associated with genetic predisposition, mainly insulin resistance, including insulin receptor with insulin receptor substrates. But recently, uh, common in genetic defects was found between both in hypothyroidism where BCOS, including a fibrillin 3 gene, which encodes for transforming gross factor beta. The GnRH receptor, Bardo, was associated with BCOS insulin resistance and thyroid dysfunction. And finally, CYP1B1, Bardo associated with BCOS and thyroid hormones. Regarding the role of sex hormones, we mentioned before, we have two opposing effects. El estrogen with el progesterone on the immune system, el estrogen the stimulatory effect on the immune system. It usually increases the expression of cytokines with interleukins on the level, on the surface of the T cells, and also increases the activity of B cell. On the other hand, the androgen will progesterone the protective effect against the autoimmune disease by inhibition of the proliferation of the macrophage, the synthesis of interleukin 6, where the peripheral antibody production. However, in cases of BCOS, there is imbalance between estrogen, progesterone, and androgen. Well, upper hand, the estrogen leading to increase high estrogen uh, to progesterone ratio. So there is a risk of development of autoimmune disease. On the other hand, in hypothyroidism, it may worsen in polycystic ovary because 
The hypothyroidism is associated with low sex hormone binding globulin with increased formation of testosterone from androstenedione and further aromatization to estrogen, so it will worsen in course of polycystic ovary patients. Finally, the rule of metabolic risk. Metabolic changes are common in both disorders. وأهمها ال higher BMI way change في الجلوكوز والوجود الانسولين resistance. زي ما دكتور تامر قال إن ال obesity by itself with increased adipose tissue it leads to a state of increased pro-inflammatory cytokines and markers with increased insulin resistance. وده it was believed to cause decreased deiodinase activity on the pituitary leading to relative T3 deficiency and the stimulation of TSH وده المسؤول عن high TSH encountered in obese patients زي ما دكتور تامر وضح On the other hand طبعا many of the PCOS patients have insulin resistant to increase BMI وجود ال obesity in particular central obesity في ال polycystic ovary will lead to ال insulin resistance وال hyperinsulinemia it will stimulate ال ovarian steroidogenesis with hypertrophy. On the other hand, it suppress the production of sex hormone binding globulin from the liver. Net result will be increased in free androgen and testosterone level and the state of hyperandrogenism encountered in polycystic ovarian patients. So my conclusion, dear professor and dear colleagues, the prevalence of hypothyroidism with thyroid autoimmunity is increased in polycystic ovarian patients. Actually, the pathophysiologic pathway and contributing factors is not well established, so we need long-term studies to assess the significance of thyroid dysfunction in patients with PCOS. And thank you for your attention. طبعاً 